Okay, so are we uh, all set up. Oh, okay, thank you, Chad. Another stellar introduction. Okay, so welcome to the uh, B'nai Asher and Zoom cooking class. Tonight, we will be cooking five recipes which have very limited ingredients. They include seeded wheat crackers, caprese salad, mini sweet potato buns, sweet and sour meatballs, and salted almond butter cookies. But I can't wait. Oh, I'm already eating some of our things. This is our sweet potato bun. It's delicious. I couldn't wait. I fell in love with it, as the song said. Now I got to talk in my mouthful. Okay. Next week, we will be on a hiatus because of the community-wide challah baking uh, event. In two weeks, we will be doing comfort food. And in three weeks, we will be doing cholent. And depending on how spicy it is and how many beans are in it, it may be comfort food or it may not. Thanks go to our accomplished Zoom director and chief food taster, Chad Cohn, who, with his, with, uh, with great effort, he coordinated with our very supportive program director, Shani Cadis, to have all of our previous classes on YouTube, on the B'nai Yashurin YouTube channel. So well done guys, we appreciate it. And if you missed my eggplant uh, soup video with the five second delay out of sync, then there's your chance to hear it or relive it. It was just not so great. All right, for me, cooking simpler is cooking better. That's why when my sister, Michelle, also known as Frummy, forwarded me some two and three ingredient email recipes, I was intrigued. I started looking at a number of limited ingredient dishes and the end result is tonight's class. But this also gives you an insight on how Tova and I work together in creating these classes. Tova obviously is a much better trained and accomplished cook and baker. I, on the other hand, through a series of circumstances and desires have gravitated into food preparation. But what we share is a curiosity, a creativity, and a, a desire to enjoy and share what we value about food and its presentation. Many of the recipes we share with you are ones that either of us have made for years, but others are recipes that we have tried just for this class and tweaked in our own way. Tonight is an example of the latter. Four out of the five of the recipes are new to us. Our first recipe, the seeded wheat crackers, caught my interest. I made the recipe six times till I got the desired results. Some of my crackers were too thick. Sometimes the dough was too wet. Sometimes the dough, uh, the uh, seeds 
stuck together or didn't stick together properly. And on my last, one of my last attempts, I gave some of the crackers to uh, Tova to try and they were undercooked and she had to put them in the uh, oven to crisp up. So we kind of learn a little bit as we go along. So I would like to, without further ado, get to our crackers. If you would play the video, please, uh, Zoom Master. We are going to make limited ingredient seeded wheat crackers. We first take two cups of whole wheat flour and put them in a Cuisinart. To this we add one teaspoon of kosher salt. We then just for a few seconds mix this together. To this we add two thirds cup of water. One third cup of olive oil and one tablespoon of honey. For the honey, we first spray the tablespoon with a little bit of olive oil so that the honey doesn't all stick to the inside of the spoon, and then we just Add the honey to the tablespoon and then put that into the mixture. It comes out a little slow, but not too bad at all. For this, then we mix this all up. Take half of a side, put it in a bowl, and cover that with a damp paper towel or cloth towel. And then we're going to roll out this other half into a 15 by 10 rectangle. I've marked the paper, the parchment paper, that we're going to roll it out on with little dots so I kind of have an idea. And I'm going to just kind of start this with my hands. And then we're going to do a lot of rolling. It takes a little time and effort to get it very thin, and it will be very thin. But we'll go ahead and do that. I put another parchment paper over to get my rolling pin and then away we go. 
After a few minutes of rolling this out, this is my result. And now I'm going to square it off a little bit. Okay. this with the other uh, half that we put in the bowl there. Okay. Then what we do is we cut this into cracker-like sizes. So we, using a little pizza cutter that I have. Cut it this way. This way. Okay, not perfect, but not too bad. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to put this on a cookie sheet. In order to do that, we're going to trim the parchment paper. And then we want to attach some seeds to this. In order to attach the seeds, we take a little water, brush it on. You could spray, if you have a little spray bottle, spray on some water. And we just paint it all up. You could also attach salt or any type of seed that you'd like. I'm going to use a little bit of sesame seeds and some and some of the everyday or everything bagel seed thing on some of it. Now to get these to stick I'll take my other parchment paper that I used on top for part of the time while rolling this out and just push on it so that they stick to it. Then I'm going to get that out of the way and and next I'm going to take my cookie sheet, take the parchment paper and place it on the cookie sheet and then we'll take it to the oven, put it in at 375 for about 12 to 15 minutes. And you have to watch these very carefully because they can go from cooked to burnt in like seconds. After about 12 minutes, we have taken the crackers out of the oven. And as you can see, some of them got a little more done that's why they have to be watched very carefully. We'll now let them sit and crisp up and give them a taste. Here is our final product. Homemade crackers with just a few ingredients, no artificial flavors, no preservatives, a wonderful taste of home. Okay. All right, Chad. I can't hear you. Have you got me? All right. Yeah, there's some questions in the chat. Okay, um, wait. I have to say one thing first. I know you're all worried. I've gone and taken a Cuisinart remedial course on how to put the Cuisinart top back on properly. So don't worry about me. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So uh, one question is, uh, how much water? It wasn't listed in the uh, recipe, they say. It wasn't listed. Uh, I believe it's two-thirds cup. I will 
double check that, okay? Okay, and uh, can you to... use white flour? Uh, well, these were wheat crackers, so I was using wheat flour. I imagine if you want not wheat crackers, you could use white flour, but it, I ne never have done that. I mean, I just went with what this said. Murray, in the video, you did say two thirds cup water. Two thirds I, cup I water, yeah. Down. So yeah, it's two thirds. So I'm glad people read the recipe at least. You also, uh, you also said a, t a tablespoon of honey. On the recipe, it says a teaspoon. Um, mine, says, uh, mine says a tablespoon. The one I got from the Temple website. Oh, it does. I'm sorry. You're right. You know, that's okay. We all make mistakes sometimes. <laughs> I, I had mine last week. You had yours today. That's okay. Even if she's a Lynn. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Um, everything bagel seasoning. Is that something you bought or you put together yourself? No, no, I bought it. I, this was from Trader Joe's. You can get it. I think at Costco, they got a big one too. So yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay. So we move on to Tova. Tova, take it away. <laughs> Crackers, I think the uh, I think the whole wheat is what gives them the flavor. It's sort of almost a little nutty, and um, they're sort of addicting. So I will warn you: once you start eating them, you may not be able to stop eating them. And they're good by themselves. You don't even have to make something with it. But um, I thought that was amazing. It never occurred to me to make my own crackers, so that was great. Um, okay, so we're moving on to caprese salad, which is the one recipe from this class that um, wasn't the first time I made it. I've made it, for, uh, I've made it for a long time. In fact, when we were talking about doing um, three to five ingredient class, my daughter Casey said, what about caprese salad? And I thought, oh, great idea. So here's caprese salad. Okay, the sound might be a little bit soft. You might need to turn up your volume on your, on your device to max. We're going to build a caprese salad. There's no cooking involved. And, and really what you're doing is putting it together. It's a fabulous summer dish. So you're getting a heads up for next year. Um, we actually filmed this the week before now what you're watching. <laughs> and I still had some garden tomatoes and basil that I could use. Um, so it's three ingredients, fresh basil, mozzarella. I bought a mozzarella ball at uh, Mark's. This is uh, kosher and I sliced it. So usually it's round. This was a little oblong. It doesn't matter. And then I've got tomatoes that I sliced up, uh, again, the remnants of my garden. And then we're going to season it a little bit, but those ingredients, um, we don't count. So Caprese salad is from the island of Capri, and uh, it uses some of the notable ingredients in Italian cuisine. And it dates back post-World War II. And it's a tribute to the three colors of the Italian flag. Okay, um, so we're gonna start. I'm gonna put down a tomato slice and my slices are all different sizes. So that's fine, no worries there. I'm gonna put a, um, a basil leaf and then a mozzarella slice. And the, the basil leaves go between every addition. Okay, so we're putting it on the tomato and then we're adding, let's turn it this way, the mozzarella and like this. And we're just gonna keep going until this is done.
Okay, so the caprese salad is all built. And we're gonna take a little bit of salt, sprinkle it on top. You can leave the salt out if you don't. It, it doesn't need a lot of it, and if you prefer not to use it, it's, it's still delicious. Okay, and now we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And we're gonna take a little bit of balsamic vinegar and just kind of drizzle it over everything. You don't need a lot of it. I've got the top of this partially covered with my thumb so I don't get too much. And then we're gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of olive oil. This is where I use a really good olive oil that I like um, because you're not cooking this. You're gonna get the flavors. Uh, it's a waste to use really good olive oil uh, you want decent olive oil, but I don't use this when I cush, okay? And this is your caprese salad, guaranteed to taste delicious and knock everybody's eyes out. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Um... So that was it. And, and what I was saying, I don't know why it came out push, but uh, what I was saying is uh, you don't have to use like the best olive oil when you cook. Um, as long as it's a decent olive oil, your dish will be great. But when you're using it in salads or anything where you're not cooking, I have a high end one um, that I like and um, use and, and it really um, enhances the flavors. Any questions or anything else that you're using? Pretty self-explanatory. Okay. okay. There was something in the chat. There was a question in the chat. <laughs> oh. What's the olive oil you really like to use for the salad? What was the name of it? The they have it in high ends. It's um we're looking at you, honey. Oh, all right. You're lovely, but you're not olive oil. Um, okay, so this is the one I really like. It's uh, Zach Bruel, uh, Z's olive oil. Uh, we actually ate at um, one of his restaurants and they put it on the table, you know, along with the bread to dip in. And it's very fruity. It's from California. They sell it at Heinen's. And um, it's not a big bottle, but this lasts me a while because again, I don't cook with it. So that's mine, but you, you know, there's so many wonderful uh, olive, olive oils and products out there. Just try them and uh, see, see what suits you. Okay, so uh, let's, let's move on, excellent. I gotta tell you a couple things. Well, one thing mainly, if I knew your hands worked that fast, Dova, I'm expecting a lot more out of you when we get back to the Benet Sheeran kitchen, okay? Because, you know, you've been slacking off. All right. Okay. Our next uh, item we're going to go to is the uh, mini sweet and potato, sweet potato buns. To make our mini sweet potato buns, we start with two sweet potatoes, which have been scored with a fork. Then we will place them in the microwave and cook them for the desired time. In my microwave, I place them on the sensor cook and come out perfectly. Cooked potatoes, sweet potatoes, open them up and take out the insides and place them in a bowl.
smashing this up a little bit and to this we start adding a cup of flour this is self-rising flour put about one cup in there at a time but we're good I just put it all together you form it with your hands you want to form it into a ball start kneading this. We need this for about eight minutes. As we knead it, we'll put a little bit of the flour on the board, cutting board, so we can stir. Uh, done kneading for eight minutes, which seemed a lot longer. We have this, not too sticky, but well integrated. And we're going to take some of these and roll them up into little balls. It says about the size of ping pong balls, maybe a little bit bigger and a teeny bit flatter, I think. And then I'm going to put them on some cookie sheets covered with parchment paper. Now, you could, if you wanted to, Put a few little uh, sesame seeds on top or something like that. And maybe we'll do a couple in a minute. But you just kind of roll them out. And then I'm going to put them on. What these will do is sit here for about 30 minutes. Let them do their thing. some seeds on a few of these. We just wet the tops. going to let all these, okay, all these uh, guys sit for about 30 minutes and then we're going to pop them in the oven at 375, which just started to preheat. Put them in for about 15 to 20 minutes and we'll see what we get. So here are our final products, our mini sweet potato buns. They're good with butter, jam, or you can make a little sandwich with them. They slice nicely. And there are only two ingredients, no oil, no salt, 
They're very good to eat. Okay. So there are, were a few questions in the uh, chat. Yes. Um, when you uh, rest these, do they need to rest in a warm place? No, I just did it at room temperature. I guess you could speed it up if you put them in a little warmer place, but. Uh, did you use egg wash or water? Uh, just water, just water was fine. Um, and have you ever made it with a mixer or is it best mixed by fork or hand? I never made it with a mixer. Again, this is like was new to me. I just made it with uh, by hand and it seemed to work out well. So I think it would be kind of, you know, kind of messy with a mixer actually, personally. I think if you used a dough hook in a mixer, it might work okay. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not much of a, a expert on hookers, so, so I would know. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, that's it. We got to move on. We got lots to do here. So next, we're going to talk about uh, our one of my favorites, the the Mamali uh, meatballs that we do. Okay. Around our house on holiday time, whether it's Rosh Hashanah, maybe Pesach, we have a traditional, simple dish with just three ingredients that we make. It's called Mama Lee's Sweet and Sour Meatballs. So I will show you how we do this. We take first equal amount of ketchup, putting it into a little saucepan. This is about two cups or 16 ounces. To the ketchup, we add 16 ounces of ginger ale. Then we heat the mixture together on a medium high heat. And get it to lightly boil. In the meantime, we take either a pound of ground meat, a pound of ground turkey, or in this case, a pound of impossible burger meat. To it, I add a little garlic powder, because I like that. And then we form some meatballs. And here are the meatballs, each probably about one ounce a piece. We then take them over to the pot where the sauce is starting to boil and we place them in one at a time. Okay, then we let it bring it back to a light boil and let it simmer for at least an hour or more. This is how it looks while it's cooking. One thing I should mention is that a lot of times you can make this in advance, especially if you're using beef, and then after it cools, you can remove some of the fat from the top. When we are done, we usually serve this over quinoa rice, where you get the best of the taste of the sauce and the meatballs. I also combined our other sweet potato slider bun with the meatball, so we have a tasty meatball sandwich. Okay, uh, is our, you, uh, well, whatever. Any, okay, uh, I, I made a mistake. We only have three of the five were uh, new things. I guess this was not. So 
Don't sue me. All right, any uh, questions? Um, where can you get Impossible Burger meat? You can get it at Heinen's, Trader for Joe's. sure. Or what? Trader, Trader Joe's. Joe's. Or you can drive to Wegmans like we used to do before <laughs> the pandemic, In but here. yes. So you can get it there, yes. Or you could use uh, Beyond Burger meat too. Um, so that's about that. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yes. Murray, can you use diet ginger ale or does it have yes, to Yes, I've used diet ginger ale. And also, um, Faith told me this was her mother's recipe, but, you know, uh, and that I was probably stealing it. But since my mother and her mother knew each other, you know, maybe they both got it from someone else and both stole it. I don't know. There was no egg in the meatballs? No egg in the meatballs. We didn't put egg. We didn't put any matzo meal or anything like that. I just put regular. When we do it at home, sometimes we do put matzo meal and egg and stuff, but they held together well and you don't need all that extra stuff because we're going on small ingredient, minimal ingredient recipes tonight. Okay, Tova. Okay. All right, so we're gonna finish up with uh, these um, salted almond butter cookies. Um, yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're making a few salted almond butter cookies, uh, three ingredients. So I've got my almond butter in this bowl and I got the almond butter at uh, Trader Joe's, uh, no salt, creamy. There's nothing in here except almonds. They also have it at um, Costco. That's a little bit bigger, but it's not huge. It's uh, probably one and a half times as big as this. This is uh, 16 ounces, so it's for two batches. So I have one cup in here. I'm going to add a cup of sugar and one egg. I'm going to stir it up. I'm just going to mix it until everything's incorporated. And, uh, my mixture is combined, uniform. It's uh, pretty caramel color. Because um, we're going to put this in the freezer for 15 minutes, um, I have a baking sheet, but it's not the baking sheet I'm going to use to bake it because that's going to be so cold from the freezer. But I, this is the baking sheet I'm going to use to um, scoop out the cookies and, <clears throat> and put them in the freezer. So I'm going to use, I have this little scooper, and it's a tablespoon. So that's just the perfect size. And I'm going to put all the cookies for now to freeze on one sheet. So I've got my cookies scooped out and on a um, parchment lined cookie sheet. And now I'm going to top them with a little bit of sea flaked salt. You can either leave the salt off, you can use kosher salt, uh, that works fine. Uh, I call this designer salt flakes because it's expensive for salt. Um, I looked at Whole Foods and it was like $8, I found it for I think $6 at Heinen's, but this is going to last me probably for years. Um, and it just gives it a good little taste. All right, so we've got our cookies. They're topped with salt, and they're going in the freezer for 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes, so I'm going to take my cookies out of the freezer.
I'm not going to use that sheet because it's so cold from the freezer. I don't want to bake the cookies on it. It'll take it longer to heat up. So I'm going to split the cookie batter because they need to be spaced. See? So I'm just going to separate them and have two cookie sheets. I'm going to put them into the oven and bake them for 14 minutes at 350 degrees. I've taken the cookies out of the oven. They're still on the, the, the cookie sheets. I've let them cool for a few minutes. They're still too hot to eat. But I'm going to carefully take them off and put them on my platter. But I just want you to see, they're kind of crispy on the edges, and um, when you bite into them, they're still a little bit soft in the center. Okay, and this is, you've probably already thought of it, but this is a perfect recipe for Passover. And uh, you can do this with peanut butter. I did try it with a batch with peanut butter, and they're peanut butter cookies, the almond butter, um, gives it just a little bit of a, a different kind of taste. Questions? Comments? Uh, why must you freeze the cookies first? Um, you're really not freezing them. You're putting them in the freezer for 15 minutes. They don't really freeze. But I, I think it, it just uh, has to do with, you see how they kind of keep their shape? I think it aids in doing that and it kind of sets the cookie batter. Uh, you know, there was a question for Murray um, too about I'm the sweet. I'm sorry, sorry. It's, it's a little late for that, but go ahead anyways. <laughs> uh, and that can you use diet ginger ale or should it be? Oh, um, we answered that. We, we answered that. You oh, weren't we paying attention. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. That's Yeah, true. we have used diet ginger ale. So it's, it's not a problem. So, so you know, I, I get all kinds of things I learned from Tova all the time. So I guess if you, uh, if, if, you know, as we get older, if we go in the freezer for like 15 minutes, we won't lose our shape. That sounds like a good idea. So you know you something? Get... Paul Newman used to put his face into ice water. And didn't he look great? So <laughs> he did. There's, there's something to it. But he started out looking pretty good too, so that's yeah. part of the problem there. Wait, 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 who did that? Who put their face in ice water? I missed Paul it. Paul Newman used to do that. Oh. oh he, did it okay. in, he did it in um, the movie. Um, what, what was Slapshot. the Slapshot? No, not Slapshot. Did he do it in Slapshot? He also did it in, um, I can't think cool. of the name of the movie, where The Sting. He did it in The Sting too, when uh, oh. he had a big wall of ice and put his his face in it and then was he into eggs and cool hand luke or something <laughs> but anyways we digress all right so we got to wrap this up okay uh we were a little bit ambitious today doing five uh items next uh well next week of course is the challah bake-off in two weeks we're doing comfort food which is going to be uh, a couple things that we do or some things we do at b'nai Ashurin, macaroni and cheese turkey chili and maybe vegan chili and meatloaf. So we'll, we'll see how that all goes and that's all subject to change too. But we'll, we'll see and then of course after that's the Cholent. Uh, following us, uh, you'll see in our chat is the Cantor's class and there's a link to that and he's gonna be talking, I'm not sure about, he talked about names last time. So he's got some other different Jewish rituals and it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting.